got no more bones. Didn't pick out, didn't get a call from a girl I wanna dig out. And my mama get me shit. Welcome to Prim's Hood Cinema. Movies. That's my catchphrase now. Today, I'm going over some of the best and the worst movie and TV musicians. You know when you're watching a movie and they got a fake rapper or singer on there? We're gonna go through a few iconic fake artists in no particular order and decide if they're good or mid. These are artists that exist only in the show's universe. It can't be a real artist, you know? Also, no spontaneous musical numbers either. Those don't count. It's gotta be a real fake artist that exists in the show and recorded a song. It makes sense. Movies. Starting off this midsection, we have Paperboy from Atlanta. Now, Paperboy, I can't necessarily say he's a bad rapper. We barely see or hear the nigga rap the whole time, but what we do here is kind of mid, honestly. Paper boy, always getting paper boy. If you ain't making money, then you ain't a money maker boy. Still, Paper Boy is a pretty believable artist. Seems like this could be a thing in the real world. Also, the rapping mailman angle is hilarious. I like that. Paperboy is portrayed by Brian Tyree Henry, who doesn't actually do any of the vocals for the songs. It's actually Donald Glover's brother, Glover brother, Glover's brother. The whole show is about him trying to navigate the challenges of the music industry, meeting a bunch of weird characters along the way. When we first see Paperboy, he's just starting to go viral and learning how to capitalize off it. He's grappling with all his newfound fame and attention, and at the same time, he's trying to stay a real nigga. He feels like one of the more authentic artists on the list for sure. Probably because the whole show is focused around his music career. That being said though, I probably wouldn't listen to this nigga. Even from these small snippets we hear, I can tell this nigga's ass. I'm sorry. It's a good show and all. Don't be mad. I still very much enjoy Paperboy's character and the show in general. They definitely should have made this nigga spit some bars though. That would have elevated the show slightly for me if he could actually rap and they showed more rapping in general. By the way, Glover Brothers' voice does not match at all. It would probably be awkward watching this nigga try to lip sync. Either way, Paperboy's ass. Let's move him over here to the ass. Time for the next artist. Movie. Over in the good category, we got Pops and the Temptones with their hit single, My Love Goes Bang Bang Bang. I don't know nothing about that boy, that's the grown folks right there. So in the Wayans Brothers sitcom, the character of Pops is played by comedy legend John Witherspoon. He runs the local diner and he real trifling. Everybody knows that. What everybody didn't know was that Pops used to be in this fire-ass doo-wop type group in the 70s called The Temptones. They only had one hit single, My Love Goes Bang Bang Bang. But let me tell you, this song has been getting stuck in my head for like the past 20 years. It's really catchy, bro. It's a vulgar-ass song too if you really listen to it. Also, John Witherspoon does not have a bad voice at all. If they were really singing this freaky shit back in the day, I could see this doing numbers. Seriously, listen to the words, bro. That nigga said, run for cover. Oh, nah. Bro is busting big bust out here. Pause. Pops ended up leaving the group before they had a chance to really make it big. When they reunite 20 years later, they do a reunion show and everybody's friends again. Then we never see or hear about the Temptones for the rest of the show. Uh, one of the Temptones gets a sex change, by the way, which by 90 standards at least, they handle this shit surprisingly well. I mean, they definitely still roasting the fuck out of her, but they made it a point to still include her and let her be herself. That's nice. You know, baby, when you left me, I was all by myself. But it wasn't the same without you. Since you've been gone, I've really changed. Where's Albert? Right here, silly. I'm Albert. Oh my God. <laughs> You were my mother's favorite. She said that she used to throw her underwear at you. <laughs> and now he's wearing them. Somebody's hands were roaming last night. Not, Not me. me. <laughs> All right, it was me. <laughs> you lied about that operation. 
John Witherspoon went solo after the Temptones and released his debut rap album, 63 Cents. No, that's unrelated. I'm not joking, though. It is a real album, though. It's 11 whole songs. That's crazy as shit. Go listen to it. To the max, the player macaronis and players. To the max, the player the macaroni and players. Yeah. To the My name is Willie. Willie I keep the ladies clean and all my fans. Speaking of atrocious rapping, we have Jamie Foxx next on the list. In 1999, Jamie Foxx starred in Any Given Sunday alongside Al Pacino and Cameron Diaz. He plays a third string quarterback who gets thrusted into the spotlight due to a bunch of injuries. He ends up being really good and becomes a superstar overnight. Then he releases a fake song and fake mixtape. That whole thing is awful. This nigga plays for the Miami Sharks, by the way. That's hilarious. What the hell is a Miami Shark? That sounds like an unreleased Adult Swim cartoon. Now, in all fairness, this one's probably bad on purpose. I think it's supposed to emphasize how much of a fuckboy Willie Beeman is in the beginning. He definitely grows throughout the movie. He becomes more self-aware and mature. But man, I'm not letting you live this shit down. This shit is ass. Who would actually be listening to this? Has any athlete ever had a successful music career? This goes for all athletes in real life too. Don't make music, bro. It's gonna be bad. It's always, always what? bad. Just go play with your goddamn inflatable ball, Willie Beeman. That shit said Magic Johnson had a music career. I'm looking for evidence. I don't know what the hell they talking about there. Shout out to the Miami Sharks though. Maybe that'll be a future video. Fake sports teams, that'd be funny. Get your dirty what? ass over here, Willie Beeman. Have a seat in the midsection. Next up, we got Powerline from a Goofy movie delivering some scorching hot heat with his single Eye to Eye. That's the best one. The song has over 10 million views on YouTube alone. God knows how many CD players and walk people this song has been through. Persons. What? So Powerline is a fake 90s pop star. He's like a dog or... A... Are these niggas dogs? What the hell kind of creature is this? Who even made this? A dog with a swirly high top fade? Like, Goofy is the only one that looks like a dog. The rest of these designs are just deformed people, basically. How did they get this far? Honestly, y'all already saw this entry coming. People fuck with Powerline more than the actual Tevin Campbell. It's crazy as hell. I know this nigga Loki heard about that, but shout out to Tevin Campbell. Shout out to Powerline. They both some black all-stars. Next up for the midsection, we have Steve Hightower and the High Tops. Now, in case you don't remember, Steve Harvey had a sitcom and a high top fade once upon a time. In the sitcom, he plays a retired musician named Steve Hightower. It's called The Steve Harvey Show, man. Why is it called that? It's about Steve Hightower, right? Who is Steve Harvey in the context of this universe? I'm sorry, bro, for the tangent. I just hate that. Just call this nigga Steve Harvey in the show. Steve Hightower was the lead singer of the High Tops. Now he teaches music in high school. The High Tops still come around occasionally throughout the series, but man, their songs are awful. Break me off a piece of that funk? That's disgusting, what is that? They even have legendary soul singer Ron Isley in the group, looking like Dr. Eggman. Somehow though, they still ass. How is that possible? This nigga Ron Isley has a beautiful voice. Why the fuck is he not the lead singer? Who would choose to listen to Steve Harvey singing over the Isley Brothers? Low-key, they do have this one song called I Will Never Funk Again. That shit crank a little bit. Wait, you abandoned your wife? Now the new girl left you? That's hilarious. This toxic ass, weak ass song. Why is Michael Scott here in the band now? 
Where is Ron Isley? They replaced him with this white man. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, get in the ass category, man. Come on, bro. Back to the good category, we got the real deal from the 2008 film Soul Men. Bernie Mac is once again washing Steve Harvey with the better performance. These niggas are way better than the Steve Hightowers or whatever. To be fair, this is a major motion picture though. They had John Legend attached and some more music, niggas. Hey, y'all had Ron Isley, bro. That's no excuse. So Soul Men stars Samuel L. Jackson and Bernie Mac. They were in a band called The Real Deal back in the day. Years after, they all retired and broke and the lead singer dies. Bernie Mac and Samuel L. Jackson gotta get back into funk mode so they can perform at the memorial. It's basically a road trip movie with two old singing niggas, the movie. Bernie Mac and Samuel L. Jackson have incredible chemistry. They should have been doing stuff together. Overall, the movie is pretty mid, but it's got some good songs. And again, that chemistry with the two leads is great. And it was Bernie Mac's last movie. That makes it way more significant. RIP Bernie Mac. Towards the end of the movie, Samuel L. Jackson finds out he has a secret daughter. Wait, I forget whose daughter this is. One of them has a secret daughter and she becomes the new lead singer. It kind of doesn't work once she joins. It was like some groovy, cool, funky shit before. But her ass comes in doing some hard ass gospel singing, bellowing to the top of her lungs in the microphone. Now we get to arguably the worst entry on the list. It's my least favorite entry on the list. These goddamn rapping Winslows. I had never even seen this episode before. I started research for this video and I found it and I wish I hadn't. This shit is so cringy, bro. It's not just because they're doing family friendly 80s style rap. It's how they present it. Like they think they killed that shit. They don't even acknowledge that it's corny or whatever. Rapping granny. We're supposed to think this is cool right now. Now I'm the dad, I make all this happen. Harriet, I'm sick and tired of all of this rap. <laughs> Y'all definitely should have included Steve Urkel in the song. Maybe he could have invented some bars for y'all weak ass niggas, man. Production value is low key amazing though. I'll give you that, Rapping Winslow's. I think Steve Urkel was on the camera. So this is from the season one finale of Family Matters. Eddie Winslow, the oldest son, decides to enter a contest to create a music video. He has a band, but he starts tripping and everybody quits on him. Hey, Urkel, you gotta get shots of my killer keyboard solo. Be sure to get a close up of me twirling my sticks. I'm the money. If this band is going any place, it's because of my talent. Who acts like this? I've never seen anybody talk or act like this in real life. That fake sitcom voice, it's so bad. Who was in Hollywood instructing everybody to talk like this? It's so unnatural and hacky. Was it a creative decision? Or were they just unable to write and perform realistic dialogue back in the day? I'm sorry, that's another tangent. I just hate the fake sitcom voice. Be sure to get a close up of me twirling my sticks. You trying to threaten me? My name is Eddie, I'm a hip cool guy. The girls come a running when I give them my eye. So come all you girls and hear me sing. Cause I'm the new king. <laughs> all you could see was my right foot. At least you were in it. <laughs> wow, this is 100% better than the Rapping Winslow song. Now nah, I'm joking, they're both terrible. I'm the dad, I make all this happen. Harriet, I'm sick and tired of all of this rap. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all should have already known that these niggas was gonna be here. This is probably one of the most legendary fake bands of all black time. I thought these niggas was a real band well into my adulthood. That's how fire these songs are. Made this lady squirt in her seat. That's some good ass singing. Nah, she fainted now. Are these niggas even famous at this point in the movie? Robert Townsend makes all his characters like cartoons, I swear. Again, realistic acting wasn't a thing yet. It's fine. Theatrical. <laughs> Is a house for love and I've learned 
So The Five Heartbeats came out in 1991, directed by Robert Townsend, of course, and co-written by Keenan Ivory Wayans. That's surprising. This shit's not funny. Is this supposed to be funny the whole time? So there's Five Heartbeats. You got Duck, played by Robert Townsend. JT, played by Leon. Dresser? This nigga's name is Dresser. Okay. What's this nigga name? Nightstand? Okay, this is Choir Boy. I remember that. And Eddie King Jr. I haven't seen the movie in a while. My grandma used to watch this all the time. I thought this shit was boring, but I would always look forward to the musical performances. Also, our friend Hardcore James is here as the bad guy. Man, this nigga is terrifying. This is a great performance. Bro could have been the Joker low-key, man. I think he would make a great Joker. That sounds like I'm roasting him. I'm not. I tried to rewatch this one a couple times. It's so boring though still, and overly long, but the music is fire. We haven't finished yet is probably my personal favorite. They all bangers though. Rest in peace, grandma. So let's do another bad one. Oreo from the 2015 film Dope. First of all, terrible band name. This shit is whack. It's like edgy Nickelodeon type music. Naked Brothers Band type beat. Also, change the name, bro. Come on, have some dignity. So in the movie, this kid Malcolm and his lame-ass friends are living in Inglewood and getting bullied and being whack. They're getting bullied by Lakeith Stanfield, of all people? How you let this nigga bully you? Come on, bro. He look like he's probably taking a couple Naruto sprints around the hallway himself. I can 100% see this nigga trying to go Super Saiyan or something in front of the hoes. Steve, you got on. Don't think I'm gonna beat your ass, Marquise. I came up with your daddy. You better ask him about Stacy. Mm. They get into some quirky drug dealing shenanigans, and it's actually pretty entertaining. This is an underrated hood movie. It's like a spiritual successor to the wood. The same neighborhood, same high top, same Stacy. Toward the end of the movie, the band actually blows up and gets famous off this bullshit? Yeah, nah, who wrote this? You thought you was writing some hits, huh? Get over yourself, bro. Like, people are hauling ass through the streets to come and hear this generic ass song. This should sound like a Dr. Pepper commercial. I always thought it was funny in movies when they're like, everybody loves this new hit song, but it's fucking doo-doo. That's what's happening here. These niggas got hella songs. They got like five full-length songs. That's crazy. That's like a whole EP. None of them are good, by the way. It's not that I don't like rock music or whatever type of music this is, but this is just not it. It sounds like they improvised all this shit on the spot. I hate the damn vocalizing OOO parts. Every 2010 song had to have a goddamn OOO part in it. This movie has a ton of hip hop all-stars in it too. ASAP Rocky, Vince Staples. These niggas ain't help with the music or nothing. This shit is ass. Anyway, that's it for part one. Let me know if y'all want me to do more videos like this. Switching up the style. Doing real YouTube videos now. Leave me some comments and suggestions down below. Check out my last video just in case you missed it. I'll see y'all next time. I love you, no pause. All right, water. DJ, I warned you. I didn't hesitate to call Ice Cube Power. So we took the pad and the booze tried to blast me. Saw the police and they killed me.